Soil School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by The Mosaic Company. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Soil School. Today I am in Morrisburg, Ontario, catching up with Warren Schneckenberger. Warren, how's it going? It's going pretty good, Bern. Awesome. Hey, thanks for the invitation. Um, Want to talk about soil today and uh, your experience here at Cedar Lodge Farms and with your family and, you know, with some of the things that you've been doing to manage soil uh, on this farm. But hey, you know, you're a busy guy, president of the Ontario Soil and Crop Improvement Association and a, an Ontario Soil Network uh, member over the years. Yep. Before we get into what you're doing on the farm, give us a snapshot of the operation. Give us a picture. Okay, so we're uh, now today in 2022, uh, an exclusively a cash crop farm. Um, historically, we had a beef feedlot uh, that phased out in 2017. Uh, some market pressures, some labor, um, but it, with uh, the evolution of our farm, uh, it was time for the cattle to go. I miss them sometimes, but uh, uh, not so much on Sundays in the winter when the silo and loaders jammed up. Awesome. But, uh, Today we're raising uh, corn, soybeans, uh, trying to get more and more winter wheat into the rotation. Um, with the limitations here in Eastern Ontario, winter kill can be a real challenge for us. Um, so we're kind of tempered on uh, how many acres of that we can do, but we, we've seemed to be having some pretty good success. Um, have dabbled with edible beans on and off mm -hmm. over the years. Again, marketing will uh, We'll definitely that. influence that and it, it can be a challenge for us we uh, we have a lot of white mold pressure here particularly along the st. Lawrence River where we are here in Morrisburg and uh, so corn and beans definitely yeah. dominate our our farming operation and uh, yeah we've been focusing on soil health for about a decade now and uh, kind of tweaking our operation mm -hmm. bit by bit uh, getting to I'm not sure what the goal is mm -hmm. but uh, we're, we're, on, we're well on our way. Well, let's talk about the journey. Let's start with the soil. Um, give us a little breakdown of that. A lot of clay? Yes, we have, uh, I'd say about a good half of our acres are clay, clay loam soils. Um, the closer to the river you get here, it gets a little bit sandy, a little bit loamy. Um, and the further north you go, we, we have some truly uh, heavy clay mm -hmm. um, that we farm uh, sometimes successfully on. Um, it can be a real challenge. Um, but uh, our bulk of our land here is in uh, this 401 corridor here. It's a Morrisburg clay loam. It's fairly shallow, mm -hmm. poorly drained naturally. It, right. It's uh, quite productive with tile drainage, um, but it's uh, very shallow and has a very heavy, high calcium subsoil that is, uh, as the uh, 1912 uh, soil uh, charts mm -hmm. would describe it as occasionally bouldery, uh -huh. which I find hilarious. Well, uh, big rock, <laughs> shall we say. Yeah. So, Warren, some great looking crops around here this year. Um, you know, some good weather thus far, not in the bin, as you would say, not in the bin, but uh, looking good out here. You know, I'm a big believer that, you know, luck is made, shall we say, you know, where preparation meets opportunity and, you know, how, how you manage your soil. I want to talk about mm -hmm. what you've been doing over the years, so, you know, to manage for a year like this year, and plus some of the tougher years, right? You, we want it to be resilient as well. Talk about uh, tillage here and, uh, and reduced till, you know, you, something that you guys, you know, pushed away from many years ago. Yep. So uh, I guess our inevitable goal would be to get to 100% no-till. Um, Corn can be a real challenge here in Eastern Ontario. You know, we are a very fringe corn growing area. Um, we, we're quite successful at growing corn with the newer hybrids, but you know, historically it's only been around for about 50 years. And uh, so we have a pretty tight growing season. So being able to get into the fields as early as we can, our clays are very slow to dry out and warm up in the spring. And uh, so we've, we've implemented strip till for all of our corn acres, uh, well, at least 95% mm -hmm. of them anymore. Um, we do do some conventional tillage. As you maybe see in the background, there is a disc behind me in the shop for some maintenance. Um, so we, we do, we farm in reality. So like the end of uh, the season this year, we had to do some tickle tillage to finish planting soybeans or else those fields likely would have yeah. been unseeded. Um, our clays can be pretty unforgiving. Um, they will definitely teach you patience. Um, but uh, yeah, strip tillage has been a, a really good, good uh, thrust for us in corn production. It's 
kind of unlocked another yield plateau mm -hmm. for us. Um, probably because it teaches you a little bit of patience, um, but it, it falls into a lot of the pillars of agronomy that we follow. Can we control as much traffic as we can in our field, strip till, well, just by definition, mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're not driving where you plant. Um, and it's uh, water infiltration, all these nice benefits that have mm -hmm. uh, just, we've just sort of, sort of fallen yeah. into. Yeah. Um, as a program. Yeah, and control and compaction, obviously a big part of that. Those tram lines. Um, tires are a big part of that too as well, yep. how, how we run the sprayer. Um, so yeah, we, uh, we have two central inflation systems on the farm. The sprayer, you know, <laughs> we were uh, joking about that, a custom applicator locally here that, you know, it used to be you sprayed once and that was it. But now we're, we're three, four, sometimes five passes with the sprayer. The sprayer's become our main tractor, really, for the farm. So it, of course, has a central inflation system. Um, in 2019, I think it was, the Dundas Soil Compaction Day, our sprayer ran through, and we, we got some pretty impressive uh, data back from that with our own equipment. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, you know, it's always good to participate in an event like that yeah. with your own equipment, get some real life uh, return on investment numbers for your investments mm -hmm. you've made. But so we've, we're trying to put as big a tires as we can on everything, um, running as low a pressure as we can, tracks on some of the machines that uh, tires really aren't physically capable of carrying like a combine. Mm -hmm. um, we do have a few track tractors uh, that have worked really well with the strip till program. Mm -hmm. Um, but they, they can be real, yeah. real maintenance hogs. Real, real, real maintenance <laughs> hogs. I can't have a soil school conversation without cover crops, something obviously a big part of your operation. Yep. You blow a lot of rye in the corn, for example. We do. Um, so in about a week or two from now, um, usually that last week of August, first week or so, depending on weather, uh, in September, we, uh, we will pull the boom off of our self-propelled sprayer. It's a high clearance sprayer, so seven feet roughly of clearance. It's quite, quite capable of traveling through uh, fully matured corn. Uh, the boom comes off and we put a European fertilizer spreader on that's capable of throwing rye 120 feet. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's capable of throwing it more. We've had to pull it back, but that works well with our controlled traffic. And uh, like I said, quite often that's the fourth or fifth pass through the corn. We actually aren't really even damaging that much mm -hmm. doing that. So we'll broadcast that rye and uh, it will germinate in September and October while we're harvesting beans. And uh, by the time we start with uh, corn harvest, uh, mid-October in the November and December, mm -hmm. that rye is growing nicely and it's well established and it usually gets some crown roots, decent rooting. That's pretty key for us here in Eastern Ontario. Mm -hmm. And uh, then it, if all goes well throughout the winter, we should have a nice green uh, crop growing in the spring that we'll uh, no-till our beans into. Mm, awesome. Hey, I want to talk to you um, about the future and some of the things you're doing now. Obviously, um, you've incorporated a lot of management systems and programs here. Um, I want to talk to you about SWAT maps. You know, uh, we've got soil, water, topography, um, something that you're working with, I think, for the first time this year. Yep. Talk to, about uh, how you're using it and what you hope to, you know, the gain from, for your operation using SWAT maps. Yeah, so we, uh, we've tried a few of these newer uh, soil sampling mm -hmm. techniques, zone management. Uh, we've tried soil optics, SWAT maps, and uh, even going back as much as 10 years ago, the Varus toolbar. Yep. Varus and SWAT, I think, are fairly similar, except Varus was very ground engaging, right. and uh, with our stones, uh, didn't, didn't work so well. But uh, so we're using, I think we've, we're gonna have quite a bit of success mm -hmm. with these SWAT maps. Mm -hmm. The uh, electroconductivity in our clay soils seems to, match our, our yield, mm -hmm. historical yield maps, surprisingly mm -hmm. well. Um, it's, uh, it's really our first year with crops growing on the few acres that we've tried as a demo. Um, and it's, it's quite, it's fascinating, mind boggling, mm -hmm. even walking through the crop. And you can visually see a change in the either biomass mm -hmm. or ears or pod counts. And you, you'll pull up the app on your phone and uh, it, it's, you, Nine times out of ten, you pass from uh, an area that is perhaps uh, 
good at retaining water and making that water available to the crop or possibly a lighter soil that uh, that isn't and it's it's and, uncanny <laughs> and, 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 and very um, you know that variable planting opportunity uh, nitrogen application I mean yep. we, we put all this together and I think you know you've got a, a map yep. to manage your soils yeah I think that's going to be the next uh, you know I mentioned strip tillage unlocked uh, mm -hmm. a yield plateau for us I, I think the variable rate planting mm -hmm. is going to uh, open the possibilities for our next plateau. I think it'll be in conjunction with variable rate fertilizer and variable mm -hmm. rate planting, but uh, it's going to come down to water management. Yeah. You know, we you mentioned our corn. Uh, we we had pretty nice dark green tall corn. We had some good moisture, but back in June we were quite dry, right. and so we we had corn rolling here, but not everywhere. And uh, you know, being able to manage by, by zone by zone, I think it's going to be. Uh, I think it's going to be very good mm. for us moving forward. Final question for you. You, you like to say, and you've said it a couple of times here today, um, you, your farm in reality. Um, you know, what does the reality look like in the years ahead for this farm? And based on, you know, where you've, where you've been from a soil perspective and where you want to go. Yep. Um, we're very fortunate to have some experience with the, you know, going down the soil health road, whatever definition yep. of that you might choose. Um, you know, labor is... It's our number one yield limiting factor mm -hmm. right now. It's uh, it's been a big challenge for us uh, the last four or five years. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, thinking back to this spring, now my wife uh, runs the strip tiller and I run the planter or spray, and my father is uh, tendering both of us. You know, when I was a young young kid, uh, we had seven or eight mm -hmm. people to do the same job with big tractors and cultivators. Um, you know, it's we're quite fortunate that uh, we made that transition when we did because um, I, I don't know how we yeah. would do it uh, today if we still relied on conventional right. tillage. Um, so moving forward, yeah, I, I, I really want, my, I'm trying very hard to get cover crops to work in front of corn. Uh -huh. We're very successful in beans and winter wheat offers an excellent opportunity mm. to get something established. But in our short season, um, you know, we don't have a lot of heat units to get, you know, it's, it's sometimes mm -hmm. a challenge just to get winter wheat to establish yep. in the fall, let alone broad acre, something like oats or oats and peas or mm -hmm. something after soybeans. The, the window there is so small that so it's really something I think that's where my next focus is mm -hmm. going to be. Um, but it, it, like I said, it, it can be a real challenge here yeah, in the I'm East. Bad. I'm bad. Yeah. Well, hey, Warren, um, thank you for sharing your reality with us here on Soil School. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much.